welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. It is Big Man Monday. Jimmy Fela is here, the new host of Fox News Saturday Nights, every He's Saturday night set. at 10 p.m. Eastern on the Fox News Channel. That's a big deal. Yeah. And if one of you were to watch, you would double my ratings. So please consider <laughs> it. Take it under consideration. At least put the set on and leave the room. So the first time you came to Fox to do The Independence back mm -hmm. in 2013. That's what it was called, The Independence. Yes. Ten years ago, mm -hmm. did you think that this would be your future? My goal the first time I appeared on this network was not to get a parking ticket. Because I had a weekly rental in my cab. I wasn't a full-time cabbie at that point, but I would still drive it to supplement my income. And I had a taxi double parked on 6th Avenue. So when you think about it, I just wanted to make it out in and out of the building without owing someone $125. That was my goal. <laughs> you talk about like playing the teams on the schedule. The NYPD was the team on the schedule that day. So no, this is obviously ballooned beyond all believable bounds, which is very cool. Yes. But I'm also having that other moment of recognition where I do know I am a very public figure now and I owe a lot of people money. Okay. <laughs> as a gambler, <laughs> as a cab driver, you. Yeah. you know, I've always been kind of out there. Family members. Yeah. Now they know where I'm at. That's this really funny. Hey, Jim, great. remember that one time I loaned you $250? <laughs> hey, Andy, yeah. I found him. <laughs> Go get my bat. <laughs> like, oh man, I'm going to get beat up in the studio. But it's exciting, and uh, this should be the moment where I sing Wind Beneath My Wings to you because, as you know, you're responsible for, like, 98% of my success. But you're also responsible for 98% of the moments where I almost got thrown out of here. That's true. So it's like, how much singing do I really have to do? Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, absolutely, there's no denying this. The yin and the yang of you and me, who, in this glorious ride we're on, and we'll continue to take together, as you know, and we're going back on tour this summer and everything, we were banned from Washington, D.C. taxis. That's true. Because we were singing patriotic songs and Jesus songs. And, and patriotic Jesus and songs. And patriotic to be Jesus fair. songs. And we're in the middle of the night, this is the, we're at the White House Correspondence <laughs> Dinner, I guess is where we are. And Kennedy and I, and you know when the booze kicks in, because we start to play Whitney Houston's Star Spangled Banner. To the point that one time we got yelled at by her ghost. Like the cloud separated. She was like, you enough. Hear, you <laughs> can hear her gurgling. <laughs> Bobby Brown showed up. He's like, enough. <laughs> enough. And we're like, all right, we won't play the way to use the Star Spangled Banner. But we were almost thrown out of a cab together. Like the debauchery we've had. And I think that's our superpower and our staying power. Because, you know, you say rock and roll is here to stay. Mm -hmm. You and me are here to stay because we're having fun. Nobody's having fun. We're yeah. having fun. But we've always been having fun. And I think that's, that's the true. superpower. It doesn't matter if it's your backyard or sitting on two chairs outside of a cigar shop. We're having fun. We're in having Ybor City, Ybor which is City not always is, easy to do. And, and people are a mess. Phenomenal people watching, but some of the best cigars I've had. Sir, and the best cigars. And so, so you guys know this if you've been down there. Ybor City has some of the best circus fat. Yes. On the circus. To which I was unfamiliar with the term circus fat until we went to Ebor City <laughs> and started people watching. Circus fat is a term. Okay. And let's be clear. I'm a 700 pound man trapped in a 245 pound man's body. <laughs> what, now okay. you, what you mean by that is, is you, you have a very disciplined diet. Yeah. No, I'm wearing Spanx. Midweek. No, I'm kidding. No, but very but disciplined midweek. I pull it together it, midweek. It's all like salads and Greek yogurt. But then on the weekends. Yep. Thank you. The cry for help. Yes. But uh, midweek is just a cry. I'm just crying. But in uh, parts of Ybor City and that part of, of Florida, they have people that are actually, we call them circus fat. Like you could, we could, if we could take one home, mm -hmm. which we can't, we can't afford to pat, get that on There's the plane. No I couldn't, but I could, couldn't but fly that person private because but, even those people <laughs> Southwest <laughs> with their pronouncement like, if you are girthy and obese, we will clear the aisle for you. You are full seats all to yourself. I still couldn't afford it. To bring one of those people home. Circus fat. You can charge people to look at them. So that's the ride we've been on. That's the ride we will continue, I, I hope right. and pray, to be on. Because we're the team nobody wants to play. Okay, now, yep. as I was watching Comedy. the Gold Globes mm -hmm. last night, and, yep. and I wrote about it for the Daily Mail, um, the piece is out today. Mm -hmm. I was watching Joe Coy. I had very high expectations. Had never seen mm -hmm. his stand-up. He uses he, him, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure. I know. I, I'm still surprised they're giving out best female Anything. actor, yeah. best male. It's actually very hurtful. Supporting actor. Yeah, yeah I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> very, very pronouny. <laughs> best living thing. <laughs> yeah. But I was watching that thinking, you know, very appropriate that Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer nominated for so many awards because J. Robert Oppenheimer spinning in his grave, like a bat in a leg with jealousy over that massive bomb. 
Yeah, the Manhattan Project has nothing on the L.A. Project, does it? Oh, but here's the thing. I mean, I've I've never seen an ass kisser trying to be funny, trying to shove his head up so many asses Uh at one time. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't do that in that room. And let me just jump in about this whole thing, because as you know, comedy is, first of all, in comedy, the phrase you hear a lot, read the room, is not specifically apropos to live stand up. Live stand up, as you know, is lead the room. You're the only guy with a mic, you're in charge. Lead them in the direction you want them to go in. Establish that you're bargaining in good faith, you'll be fine. Now, I grant you that's a harder room in that they take themselves seriously. But when they see the weakness they saw out of him, he's not in charge of that room. He told the Taylor Swift joke. It didn't like she was, she didn't Will Smith him. Mm-mm. She just stone faced him. Yeah. That turned into, I'm abandoning my writers. Yes. I'm just up here to have what, a good time. He goes, I just got this job, this job 10 days ago. Chill out. Yo, if I got that job, that job 10 minutes before I went on stage, you could be funny. Yes. If you're a good comic and you are a writer. I mean, 10 days, for 10 all, days, 10 days round the clock writing Dude. with a team of writers. Dude. That's a long time. Shut your face. Like, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, it's like, I only got this 10 days ago. It's like, dude, I don't care. You're not doing skits. Yeah, yeah. You're not doing, like, you know, pre-rehearsed, pre-shot packages like Billy Crystal at the Oscars 20 years ago. You're paragliding in or doing song. You're doing nothing. You're just, you're telling, like, some gimmies. mm -hmm. And everyone at home wants to eat it up that he was so worried about offending people and being yep. liked and and it made me ri- miss Ricky Gervais so much. Well that's the point. The Taylor Swift reaction and the reaction in the room to him is why Ricky Gervais can't be there. If you can't handle Joe Coy, but this is the yeah. moment in Hollywood where like the dirtbags are winning because this makes it that much harder for Ricky Gervais because they go, well, from here on in you, you see you don't make fun of us because that that's what happens. They need a flamethrower in there yes. to come in and rough them up because the truth is it's endearing to laugh at yourself number 1 and what Hollywood is getting wrong is these people are famous because they hit the genetic lottery. Okay, that's why they're famous. You could tell me they acted or they were courageous. There's not a brave role out there. You're making $30 million. You're surrounded by craft services and unlimited security. Are you that brave? You know, but getting past that for a second, (laughs) because they take themselves way too seriously. We always accepted as a society that they had it better than us. They had better lives than us. You were making $30 million to pretend you were a cop. You were having sex with multiple starlets after the show. Oh, to be clear, most of the male actors are having sex with other male actors. We know what's really going on. Still on in Hollywood. Starlet. Thank you. But still they're, they're Starlet's, Starlet's. Still Starlet's yeah. nonetheless. Yeah. You're making living a life of spectacular prosperity. And all because you were born into a level, a level of genetic prosperity that uh, we conceded defeat. We're yeah. like, Hollywood, you got us. Yeah. And for one night a year, we're willing to go out there and celebrate you and all your debauchery and exploits. But now they started to do this thing where they're pretending they're just like us. And that's not true. No. And we didn't want this from them. But that's what's ultimately allowing their comedy to fall off a cliff. It's because it's now accepted that, hey, it wouldn't be nice to punch down. But you can't punch down at the Golden Globes. They're all gazillionaire gorgeous yes. people. Yes. But and there's no and also there's no redistribution for that level of genetic wealth. None. And, and they're total bullshit artists when it it comes to and but that was one thing that i was happy about it was to not be lectured to and i will never forget when meryl streep won the cecil b DeMille award i think it was Mm. in 2017 and she wasted it it was 2017 she wasted her time talking about trump and what a bully trump is and how dare he and and she could have talked about this incredible career Mm. Mm. wrapped it up in a speech that everyone would remember and now we just we think about him and it diminished her absolutely that's why i say this all the time like hollywood actors should stick to doing what they do best which is cocaine okay (laughs) as you know that's what they should be doing (laughs) Okay, have your little award show. Go oh, out and bang okay. each other. Speaking of which, you, know, you win. You know who really drove me up? A, uh, oh, give it to me. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. No. You know, he he was so smug and arrogant and annoying mm-hmm. and just like, you know, give me the trophy. Yeah, my wife, blah, blah, blah. Nah, I don't want to yeah. be here. Yeah, and it was, it was so annoying. It's like, you are like, two years removed from being Hollywood's Hunter Biden. Yeah, yeah. Like, that was not that long ago. And I know there are a lot of people who conveniently forget. And you know what he's losing about that? You make a great point, is a lot of Marvel movies are bombing now, Mm -hmm. which means the reverence for being in one of them is about the street value is about to fall off a cliff. And street value is a phrase he's familiar with. And that's what she was alluding to long before he was Iron Man or Iron, I believe it's Iron Them. But there were iron bars in front of him. He was in jail for drug use. Jail, rehab, constant arrest. And it's like, and now 
he he acts as though he's Sir Lawrence Olivier. But that's the part, okay, that drives me crazy. These are gorgeous people. OK, that are so gorgeous in some instances, not only do they not have to know what they're talking about, they don't even have to have a plan like Matthew McConaughey. I like Matthew McConaughey a lot is so hunky that they will pay him to talk to himself in a Cadillac ad. Mm-hmm. He drives around in a Cadillac just, yeah. you know, sometimes a rattlesnake makes muffins and the, and the women just leave a snail trail to the deal. Oh, my God. I never thought about that. Honey, I'm buying a Cadillac. You guys are that gorgeous. Just go be gorgeous. Yeah. And even Shut up. Jared Leto. Yeah. So I was watching this and I couldn't tell our tour manager, but Jared Leto <laughs> was on MTV because my so-called life was on ABC for a season. MTV bought it. Mm-hmm. So he would do all this press for MTV. When I was there, he was on my d- Oh, like was Jared he Leto, and he was too pretty for me. And I was just like, <sighs> I just can't. Because first of all, he's so, uh-huh. he was so handsome back then yeah. that I just, I didn't believe that Jordan Catalano, that was his character's yeah, yeah. name in my so-called life, actually liked this. Uh-huh. So I was like, no, can, but can he I, can was I, legit well, can, I'll on ha- my ween. Let's, I, I, I don't doubt it. Let me, let's have a moment for me, you and the viewers here, because we don't have this kind of talk often. But when I think back of you at MTV, like I would have wanted to shack up with you. I mean, I would have thought it was Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> if, but see, that's what I love. Is like, I love your work on Eat It. <laughs> see, people always, people always give me a Linda Belcher meme uh-huh. as though a I don't know that, or b uh-huh. like somehow it's insulting. No, it's no. Like, I love that so much. Like, I know this whole thing. This is intentional. No, it's a whole production. Like everyone in my life, every single person, you included, has looked at me on a regular basis and gone, "Are you really wearing that?" <laughs> I mean, it's like when we've done shows together, live shows, you've gone, okay. Listen, right. to be clear. <laughs> I guess when, it's make a wish night. At least once a week, if you're in the lobby when Kennedy walks into the building, someone else will grab a human shield. Just assuming like, oh, this is it. <laughs> they breach security. <laughs> There's a real look there. Yeah. Uh, but we love it. And we're thankful for it. <laughs> well, I'm so excited. So I want you to know, mm. and I told your team this on Fox News Saturday Night, I had a dream last night that your first guest on Fox News Saturday night, this coming Saturday, was David Letterman. Could you imagine? I think you should try to get him. He'll never like, do it. I though. have like, psychic Fox. dreams. That's amazing. I'll reach out. I mean, I might get a guy who has a Letterman jacket who played in a couple <laughs> of sports at Division Avenue High School. I'd love to, but the, I mean, I think the resounding sentiment is you're just going to see people I think are cool. Yes. Our friends, our people but that also, we think are cool. Like, what happened with you? So mm-hmm. so you got to the independence and later the show I had on Fox Business and you were the head writer for years because someone on the show I used to work on went and saw you at a yep. comedy club uh-huh. and went up to you and said, hey, would you like to be on this show? But what I love is you are going to find comics yes. who deserve that shot. Thank you. Who deserve a moment in a conversation and give them a chance to shine because the coolest thing you can do. It's like the next Jimmy Fela is there. And yeah. you know, the best thing you can do mm-hmm. is find other cool people to go on this ride. That's what we need. I mean, the coolest thing about being in this position is be is the ability to offer offer other people that path. But more importantly, I don't want to work that hard anymore. Can you just bring me in some you. talent? They could do, I've been killing myself for Jimmy, 20 like, years. No, but seriously, <laughs> I, know, I, I don't know how you do it. And I do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of mm. work, but but you do like the 4 a.m. show. Yeah, and then yeah. you're on Hannity. And then mm. you're you're throwing and, balls with and, Hannity. And I have this guy. <laughs> I need rotator cuff surgery because Hannity makes you throw like 700 footballs yeah. a show. Yeah. But I can't stop doing the 4 a.m. show because then it looks like, oh, you got your own show. Oh, you don't come up. You don't yeah, come on anymore. Mr. Big Shit. <laughs> and I, I get it. I know I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I did 20 radio promo hits today. Yeah. TV hit. You know, all. I, yeah. I had to text your assistant's assistant stop in order it. to get you here today. <laughs> You stop. I guess it works. I love you. Thank you. You're You're the best. Goddamn best, Jim. Um, Oh, by the way, this has been Kennedy Saves the World, along with Jimmy Fallon. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts, and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network. 